Hey guys, this is Joe from Cincinnati here. So, um, you know, it's funny. This game that I'm recording, or that I'm about to about to commentate on, was played last week. I want to say, oh, oh, January seventh. Ah, it's right, it's right there. All right. So January seventh, uh, Sir Largeness, or as you guys may know him, Chris Potorf or Fro Top, or whatever you want to call him, uh, the guy who just won. Um, the Pack South Kotai. He he messaged me, and, or he I guess he joined this game and asked if if uh, I'd like to practice because he needed some practice against um, Crab. So he he was testing his deck for the Kotai, and uh, he wanted to get some practice in before the Kotai. Uh, and he even says here I need a good spanking. So uh, we played three games, and I've you know I've been meaning to get some Scorpion games on my channel anyway. And uh, I hear that Chris is a pretty good Scorpion player, at least the results would indicate such. Uh, so I figured this would be a good a good test of the deck uh, versus a deck that it might struggle with. You know, Scorpion is something that a lot of crabs struggle with historically, generally. Um, and, you know, hopefully I can kind of help with some strategy in these three games we played. So, here you go. Uh, I start out, you know, and I'll post my deck list uh, in the chat, in the little thing there, down there, the description, that's what it's called. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's a little more Dishonored focused, you see I have this Intimidating Hita out here. Uh, it's, it's a little more Dishonored focused, that's what my conclusion is, is that Scorpion, if I'm going to beat Scorpion consistently, it's going to be through Dishonored pressure, because if you're letting them... If you're just letting them draw five cards around, you're not going to beat them. That's just not how... That's, the Scorpion has much better conflict cards than we do. It's just the nature of the game. So, anyway, uh, you can see here I have um, a Crisis Breaker, two Heated Guardians, and a uh, Keeper Initiate. And I have a Watch Commander, a Spyglass, a Cloud the Mind, and um, a Wayfinder in my hand. So... He has a um, Imperial Storehouse, an Atomo Courtier, uh, Yanako, and the Manipulator. So he buys the Manipulator with one fate on him. Is that what, it, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, the Bayushi Manipulator with one fate. Um, and if you guys haven't noticed, if you if you don't know yet, um, Chris did win the Kotai at PAX South with. An iteration of this deck. I don't know if it's an exact deck, but it's very, very close. Um, so I just, I just buy just the Berserker because he can participate in two conflicts uh, at least, if not more. I have a Wayfinder in my hand, and I just top decked um, that thing, the Skirmisher. So I have plenty of characters to go around with for fate. And I figured I, I wanted to. Uh, I want. I had a bunch of cards in my hand that I wanted to play if I needed to. Like if he played Kachiko, he can't now. But if, if for example, he played Kachiko, I'd want to cloud the mind him. So I need the fate to do that. He bought a manipulator and a Tomo Courtier. Uh, now, as you guys may know, his deck is based around Mono no Aware, uh, as a way of you know controlling the board. You know he plays Mono no Aware. Uh, he cancels their cancel if necessary. He uses um, what's it called? The uh, the little the little one cost conflict character to look at your hand beforehand to see if you have cancels before he does it. Uh, things like that. And so he was curious about how it played against Crab because Crab has reprieves and Iron Mines and rebuilds the Iron Mines and Vanguard Warriors. So it was a little um, different. You know, and here he goes. He plays them. You can form it to look at my hand. Shocking stuff. By the way, he bid five, and I bid one. So uh, I have. I I did that because I had the spyglass in hand. Um, you know, if, if, if he if he calls in favor, that's fine. Yeah, he just call in favor. I mean, there's not much you can do about it. Honestly, it's just something that you have to deal with. Luckily, he didn't really have anyone that was like. Um, worth putting it on, necessarily. He kind of just wanted to get rid of it. But he dishonored himself one more, so that's nice. You know, he has, um... And he, he, he is going to attack now political... 
uh, with two characters, and he's going to hit Fertile Fields. Now, in my current deck, uh, right now, I'm actually running Before the Throne, which I've had some pretty good success with. Um, mainly because... Uh, you know, if I'm dishonor pressuring them, it's another province they don't want to break. So that means that they have to, if they want to get to my stronghold, they either need to break Shameful or they need to break uh, Before the Throne. Unless I mess up and I let them break um, Shameful on the first round, you know, it's not really, you know, uh, it's it's pretty good to have two provinces that they don't really want to attack into. Because I have Rally in my province row. I know a lot of people have switched to Public Forum or Defend the Wall. I have still not gotten on board that train, but, um, you know, I, I like Ancestral Lands under my stronghold too much. But uh, I have Rally to the Cause, which once it flips, it's a free break for them, so they can just keep going back to that until it's broken. So I'm not really worried about Before the Throne being a farmable province, because I'm already running a farmable province in uh, Rally to the Cause, if that's what they want to do. Uh, my other one... Um, Meditations, you know, sometimes it's farmable, sometimes it's absolutely awful for your opponent, so it, it kind of varies. Um, anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, I I did not defend that he won, but didn't break. I had a I had a wayfinder in hand in case he ever was threatening to break. I I could uh, not worry about it. And now I just do a military air conflict uh, with the wayfinder. You know, it's not necessarily a thing that I care if I win or not, but, you know, it would force him to either defend with this guy and then do something else, or, uh, you know, or I, 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 I take a free honor off of him, which is never a bad thing, especially when I've already got him down to seven and he's about to lose one honor for a guy being dishonored, things like that. So, um... And I, I meant to do political, obviously. If I was going to do military, I would have attacked with the Crisis Breaker. I just as a Jigoku error. And I played with the Wayfinder. I saw a Shameful Display, and that's something I don't want to hit. So I kind of took a risk by just attacking a random province, because I could have run into Pilgrimage, in which case he wouldn't have to defend and wouldn't really do anything. Or he'd defend, and then it doesn't do anything. So he does defend with his guy here. And uh, what does he do? He court games? Yeah, sure. So we court games this guy to go up to two. Alright. I just court games him back. You know, I'm not so upset about hitting Sacred Cash because when your opponent has nine cards in hand, them getting one more card isn't a huge deal. I mean, obviously they get to select what it is, so it's not fantastic. But it's not real. It's not like a back-breaking play. So he lets me win and I, I just take an honor from him, you know, uh, go down, let him go down to six honor, he'll go down to five honor at the end of this round. Um, it's not, it's not amazing, but it's not bad at all. Um, and he has two fate, so, you know, what's the worst thing he could possibly have in his hand, right? Uh, so I'm going to attach a watch commander to my crisis breaker. Just so I can do a military, probably earth, because I have this keeper monk in my provinces. Let's we'll see what I do, but that's that's my guess. Yeah, so then I just go back to uh, the sacred cache, and I, you know, I have to flip it again because of all that. So uh, that's a uh, political of four. Is that or a military of four? So he's not going to defend most likely. No, well, he can't defend. He might, whether he plays a character or not, is up for debate. But. Um, he has two fate, so he could do something if he wanted to. And of course, he plays Miramoto's Fury. I do make him lose an honor for that, so he's down to five. And then I play the Harum Skirmisher in just to get it, just to to win the conflict. Now, I'm starting to run out of cards. Uh, <laughs> well, I have been running out of cards. Um, he charges in Yunako. That's a shame. But he uses another honor for that. And that allows me to stand my guy because I'm losing. So now it's, I think, 5 to 4. And then he switches the Crisis Breaker stats. And there's nothing I can do about that. I didn't have the fate for uh, the, sh the cloud. And I don't even know if it would be a good idea to do that. So I didn't. And now I just have... Um, 
a losing conflict. So he won the Earth Ring. I don't get my Keeper Monk. But he used two cards. He spent two Fate, I think. And uh, he was down two Honor. So, you know, I didn't get the Ring of Earth, but I basically got a souped-up Ring of Air, if, if you want to think of it like that. I would have preferred the Ring of Earth, but, you know, things ha shit happens, right? So, uh, he gets a favor. He puts on a military, because why wouldn't you? I lose two guys, and then my my Crisis Breaker has zero fate on him. Uh, and then I get rid of basically everything. I, I want to see a, c a couple more impactful characters. So You always want a one-coster just to have it. And then I flip two Shuichis, which, they're not great, right? They're not great because I don't have a holding, but he has holdings, so forget what I was about to say. Uh, so, I start with the Shrewd Yasuki. Yeah with one fate, and then I can just do Suichi with zero fate and then dupe him. I'll have zero fate to start the round, but I'm first player so I can attack like fire and get a free fate or something along those lines. So uh, it's not ideal, um, but it's it's something. And I bid one again. He bid one, obviously. So he's down to, th to four honor. Um, he just used a stronghold. By the way, most broken stronghold in the game, bar none. Very easy to call that. Uh, so, let's see here. Do I take the fate, or do I block the void ring? That's the question. Or do I get the keeper monk? I have options, is what I'm saying. I could do air to further pressure him. I could do earth to get my keeper monk. I could do fire to get some fate. I could do void to stop him from voiding my characters. Uh, ultimately, I think I do go with the earth ring. And I go political, stealthing his guy. So if he has a character in hand, he kind of has to play it. Mm. Or I suppose I could do water and just bow that guy. And get a fate. Or fire. <laughs> okay. I mean, all five rings do something. So... Yeah, military is seven. Because if you're doing a military conflict, there's really no reason to not put the the Crisis Breaker in, because then he can always just come into the defending military conflict, or stand himself if he needs to, if he's being bowed, things like that. So, uh, I get the Fate, I get the Fire Ring, he does not defend. I gain a Fate from Shuichi, because he has a holding out. Let's see if I can get him to play something. So, uh, Fire just dishonors this guy, which is nice because it's more dishonor pressure, and I got the Fate. I could have done Air. Uh, if he gets desperate, he could always come back on Air with me and go back up to 5 Honor, but if that's how he wants to use his rings, I'm not truly opposed to that. That means he's not doing Void, and he's not doing things like that. Now, unfortunately, I ran into Meditations in the Tao, which means that Shuichi lost the one Fate he had on him from the dupe that he had, which sucks. Uh, but, uh, what are you going to do about that? You know, it's not, they're spill, crying over spilled milk is a thing that you can do. So he sends my guy home, which hurts, because now he can't return to a conflict this round, and that means that Watch Commander is out of play. Uh, right about now, I kind of wish that I did Watering, because then I could at least stand him, so he could participate in another conflict with that Watch Commander. But, again, spilled milk, all that shit. Um... He's letting me win, at least. I don't have a way to break, though, which is unfortunate. So then he brings his guy in, which means he probably has something else, like a for shame or something. Yeah, there you go, it's for shame. Hey, hey. And I don't have any answers to that, so I may as well just bow. There's no reason to, uh, to dishonor him just for it to not matter at all, because he's two in my one because of that favor. Woo, favor. So he won. I bowed two guys to get basically nothing. But he's at three honor. So he can't assassinate anything. That's nice. Uh, he has five fate. So he can't play Kachiko because that would be crazy to play Kachiko with no fate honor. That's just asking for asking for trouble. Um, just checking to make sure. Then he plays an unassuming Ajimbo. Which... Okay. 
That's fine. Uh, if he hadn't a fate worse than death, my crisis breaker, then that wouldn't bother me at all, but he did, so... Then this breaks, unfortunately. So he's going to attack into Fertile Fields with air, which is fine with me. Now I need to draw my card, which I get a charge. Which I could play, honestly, if I wanted to. I could charge in and save the province, maybe. Uh, that is a possibility. But I think... Let's see here. Do I charge in the Guardian? No, I just let it break. Um, one break isn't a huge deal to me, especially at the cost of one fate, one card, and, and you know, a really good card. And now I can get a, uh, a free attack, theoretically. And then he assassinates me. So he's down to two honor. That's the two honor that he gained from the air ring, which is annoying. So, eh, I sh maybe I should have done uh, air instead of fire. Who who's to say? It's, it's hard to make these decisions a lot of the time. So, anyway, he cleared my board, which is like his emphasis with this deck. is like he, he wants to clear the board at all times. Uh, so I play a Heated Guardian and a Crisis Breaker, and I have a charge in my hand, which is fantastic, but obviously he could be canceling them. I play a Spyglass and he lets it go. That's the second time that I've had a, uh, a, a, a Spyglass that I've gotten nothing out of. Because that's what fun decks do, and that's how people enjoy this game. Um... <clears throat> He's going to attack into the Iron Mine, which is shameful display, which I will happily defend. Because it's shameful display. He does water. Uh, so here we go. I'll honor my guy, dishonor his guy. That makes sense. Perfectly fine. And then I will uh, buff with Stronghold. And what does he do? He just discards his Imperial Storehouse to draw a card. And then I won on defense, which, I mean... Sure. And then I do an Earth Ring. He has 10 fucking fate, but he doesn't have a character on the board right now that can stop me. Because that guy, you know, is a, a dash 3. So I attack into Meditations because my guy has no fate, and he plays Kachko. Which. Uh, am I happy about it? No. But. Um, I'd much rather face her in a. Um, I'd much rather face her in a, a military conflict than a, a, um, uh, oof. And then he plays that other guy. So he got, he got out 10 fate worth of conflict characters to stop this air earth ring to stop me from getting a keeper again. Uh, I could play like, I mean, I could cloud the mind, that cunning thing. But I'd still be losing, I think, because that would just give me four strength back. So I lose again, everything out. Um, but I do have the way, the the witch hunter, so I can uh, I can I can I can sacrifice that to stand. I would I would say the yeah that guy yeah right there yep yeah, right there there there. There you go. You did it. You did it. Okay, and then he's doing another air conflict. I can't stop it, but I can prevent the break. So he gets the air ring again. Now, I probably should have just been doing air over and over again, but I really wanted that Keeper Monk, and I did not anticipate him being able to stop me, even with 10 fate, but, you know, that's Scorpion for you. Uh, but I do have this additional challenge. Um... So I can do like a I can do a fire ring to get more dishonor pressure on him, and then I just I, I just throw that on her real quick, because why not? If he's got another let go, that's fine. So I can do a uh, fire ring, or I could do void. Void gets me a fate, and I remove a fate from Kachiko, even though she's only a, a three. So the decision was like, do I do I hasten her end? Or do I make her a zero three? And now she, I mean, she's clouded, so it's not a big deal to make her a zero three. It's still going to be annoying to deal with her, but um, you know, whatever. I play a Vanguard Warrior because that's a good card that you can play. Um, 
and it's going to keep my guy around if I wanted it to. And then, did I just pass? I just passed. Interesting. Okay. Um, so he has five fate. I think I want to do a water military conflict so that if he um, if he doesn't defend with Kachiko, then you know she bows. Seems like a solid plan. Ah, but then I do Earth because I am obsessed with this Keeper Monk. I don't know why I'm obsessed with it. It's just, it's a fucking keeper monk. I felt like at this point it was almost like a a point of like pride. Like I'm gonna get that fucking keeper monk. You know what I mean? So I get it. I get the keeper monk. What? What? Um. Now he can attack at will. He hits meditations, which invalidates my fucking my fucking void ring. Ugh, that is the worst thing ever. Uh, so I just move it over to a shameful display because I want to dishonor her, which I should have done last round. Uh, it's three to three, and then he pays to get get rid of it. I pass. <sighs> anyway, um, but it yeah, didn't break again. Uh, but he he keeps getting back honor very very slowly you know he's gotten the air ring like three or four times now uh, if I had been focused on the air ring this game would be over by now uh, because I could have just been doing the air ring instead of like this earth ring and stopping him from getting his air rings uh, that would have been good you know that would have been nice so um, I'm gonna do a political fire and I'm trying to decide because I know that shameful display is under Yunako I think uh, sh that means Pilgrimage is under Heroe, and then Sacred Catch. Now, Sacred Catch is not great, but when you're playing against Scorpion, there are no good answers. Like, there are no good answers. There are no good answers. So, um, you know, that, that, uh, that's a thing that happens. He's dishonoring my guy, which is fine. I'm still breaking, so I pass. He has four fate. Now, at this point, I'm starting to think, like, I wonder... If what he's trying to do here is he's waiting for me to do my Vanguard Warrior, and then he's going to, um, like, Mono Noire. That, that seems like something that you would do, right? Because he has no fate on the board. I have just the one fate. So my decision has to be, do I assume he has it and put the extra fate on the Crisis Breaker so that I can keep my Crisis Breaker? Or do I, and this is the second time he's charged out Yunako, by the way. Uh, what Hold on, slow down. Slow down. What I do here? So, uh, so, oh yeah, right. So he, he, that was a void ring. Ah, so it didn't matter. So we did a void ring to remove the fate from Crisis Breaker. I add a fate to the Crisis Breaker with Vanguard Warrior, and then he plays Mono Noire. <clears throat> so he has two honor and zero fate, um, but both of our boards are clear. Uh, I have 14 fate now. How the fuck did I do that? I am pretty good at this game, guys. Uh, so he plays out three guys. Ser hold on. I, I, how the hell did I get set? I got. Sorry, guys. I got to rewind this. How did I do that? What did I do to get seven fate? Did I just like pass super aggressively in that last round? Come on. Oh yeah, yeah. I I just bought the Vanguard Warrior. Ha! Huh. Just bought the Vanguard Warrior. All right. So, yeah. So I had 14 fate. So I bought out a bunch of big fucking guys. Uh, so now he's attacking with everyone in the rally to the cause, which immediately sends home the little girl, and then I can defend uh, relatively well here. And then he lets me win because. Um, there's only so much you can do. And then I do Earth, because I want that Keeper back. Give me that Keeper. Now he has three Fate, so there's not much he can play out right now. You can't play Kachiko. The the Yojimbo doesn't really matter at this point. He plays a Crisis Breaker, but that's not going to help him a whole lot. It's just one strength. But he does get to do a Shameful Display. 
Uh, I resolved the Earth Ring to get my dude, to get my keep 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 seize monk. And then I uh, get an assassination, which is nice. Not that it's going to matter here, but um, it's it's something. And then I do fire because fire is the other honor pressure ring when air is not there. So he's got four fate. Uh, he stands the crisis breaker and sends him in, so I don't lose. I don't win. I don't break, but I you know do that. Did I break? No, I just won five to five. I'm gonna slow this down. I'm going a little fast here. Um, so that last round, his board clears. My board does not clear, and then I get another crisis breaker, uh, an iron mine, a that thing, favorable ground, and a keeper monk. Um, the keeper monks are. I'm always. I'm always happy to see them because they are fresh bodies. They pressure away the crab. Or it's not way the crap. They pressure dishonor through unopposed. They stop honor loss through you know defending challenges. Like they're just a body you get every single round as long as you do your earth ring, uh, and they last two rounds. So uh, anyway, I just weigh the crab uh, to get rid of that shinobi because I don't want him to crisis breaker again. You know, like I don't I don't want to deal with that. So uh, he plays out what is that? The illusionist. Um, not my favorite thing to deal with, but, yeah. And then I finally get my second Watch Commander. Now, I've, I've since gone up to three Watch Commanders, because this Honored Pressure deck has been doing so well lately. It's, I think it's like 8-0. Um, but, still, I mean, I've been stopping him. So, here we go. Hold on. One second. I just want to stop this real quick. So, the reason why I think this strategy works the best against Scorpion, the, the, the Dishonor Pressure strategy, even if you don't Dishonor them out, because as you can see, I have two breaks on him, so I just need one more break, like on Shameful or on Pilgrimage, which I can, I can like, I can force through uh, a military win relatively easily most of the time, uh, especially since my glory doesn't really matter to me. So Shameful display is not super scary. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm playing so many attachments. Uh, the reason Scorpion Dragon is so good right now is because it controls attachments so well. Because, you know, if you're running Unicorn Splash, for example, which is a very popular splash at this point in the game, um, you have a situation... I'm going to get some water. I'll be right... I'll be, uh, I'll, just, I'll just move this over here so I can pour myself a glass of water. Uh, you have... What was I saying? Ah! You have Scorpion Dragon, and they're so strong because they have basically up to six attachment control cards. Three calling in favors, uh, three let goes. So if you're running the Unicorn Splash, they can take your Spy Glasses, take your Talismans, take your Reprieves, and it can be really difficult to handle. But if you are Dishonor Pressuring them, especially if you get Watch Commanders, if you can Dishonor Pressure them, that means that you can uh, stop them from drawing a bunch of cards. And the fewer cards they see, the less likely they are to find all those cards. The reason Scorpion always feels like they have all the cards in the world is because they can bid five all game. And unless you're hitting that critical mass of, you know, getting them down to two, three honor, they are in no, f they are in near no fear of being dishonored out because if they bid five and you bid two, uh, they'll just take an honor from you, and it's like they bid four, and you know that's not so bad. Two honor loss, but they get five cards. You know. Um, so, the reason that this deck, I think, works against Scorpion is because it can Dishonor Pressure so effectively against Scorpion, and if they are being Dishonor Pressure, they can't draw as many cards because they are sitting at very low honor. Uh, sitting at three. He's been at three like, basically the entire game, so he can never really bid higher than one. At least not yet. Until I get lower, he can't bid more than one. So... Um, that's why I think it works, and see here, I played a Watch Commander, and um, I don't think he has an answer for it. He might. We'll see. Ah, he does. Oh, <laughs> look at me. Talking out of my ass. So, yeah, he's seen uh, he's seen a little over half of his deck, and he's seen, what is it, three or four now? Four attachment control? Three attachment control? Something like that. So, so he gets that. That's fine. I don't need conflict cards to to win conflicts, fortunately for me. So I can just do an uh, Earth, Military, into Pilgrimage.
He gets a fate going up to six. Who fucking cares? Um, and then I get a, then I can get a keeper monk. Now I could also do air. <laughs> I could also do water. Could do air. I do air. So it's pilgrimage. So he gets his free fate, which is fine. Um, you know, uh, at this point, if he has Kachiko or if he has something on those lines, it doesn't really bother me so much. He's only drawing one card around. So, you know, what are the odds, right? And yeah, I'm counting his attachment controls. So he's gotten three, he's gotten uh, two callings, one let go, which is pro about average. And then, as you can see, he just kind of lets me take it. So now I have the decision, like, can I pull back a guy and break with just the two? Now that's awfully risky. Uh, I think I just decide to, to just let it just let it break. Yeah, I could have I could have um, favorable grounded someone home, and then that would have allowed me to, uh, you know, have two defenders rather than just the one. But it depends on what he plays, because if he plays a, uh, if he plays anything at all, yeah, he's going to go to rally to the cause. And this is another thing. This is another thing I mentioned. Uh, if fertile fields right here, if that were uh, before the throne, then he would have had to break it or a shameful display to get to my stronghold. So him breaking a fertile fields didn't do anything for me. But see, he has two honor. If he had broken that, I mean, either he would have had to change the way his game played. Or he would have had to um, like lose. He he would have lost. This would this what would have happened. He would have lost. So he does water. I think it just was a pure fake grab move, uh, <clears throat> because yeah, there's there's no other reason to do that. And then I do earth so I can get a couple keepers. See if I can do that. Is that possible? Can I do that? Is that a thing that can happen? He plays a meek informant. Uh, in the conflict, he gets to see my hand. Uh, it's not a great hand. It's not something that's like wonderful. But I do not win. Oh, I, I I win, but he's he's doing his you know he's doing his mono no war. And this is one thing that I will say about his deck uh, against crab. It's not fantastic because I have two reprieves in my hand, and he just used a calling in favors to take watch commander that did nothing for him. I mean, like it stopped. It stopped. It didn't do nothing. It stopped him from losing honor for playing cards, but it made it so that he had it for one turn. I didn't lose any honor to it because I just ignored it. The guy was only in one conflict, and I just let him take it. Uh, but because he did that, he didn't take one of my reprieves, which meant I got to keep these two guys uh, for reprieves and just was like, hey, how's it going, guys? Check it out. Check me out. And like I said, uh, this is just another... Another thing is, you know, I have all these characters on the board because I've been accumulating fate over the course of the last few turns. You can see it in my fate, my my ring selection. You can see it in my early passes with reprieves and vanguard warriors. You can pass early. Uh, you know, it, it gives you a lot of room uh, to do things like that. So, you know, he's at two honor, right? Yeah, he's at two honor. Uh, it's looking relatively grim for him but he does have um he does have 10 fate so he could play huh kachiko again you know that's something he could do uh he only has three cards in hand though he drew two he bid two this round so um he does water just to bow some people which is fine um He's seen a lot of holdings, which is going to help me out here because I get to do my Shred Yusuke to look at more cards. So I defend with six. Now, I defend with six because if he did have Kachiko, and that's six, that's six more strength, he'd be at eight. He would need to get up to, you know, plus whatever it is, plus <clears throat> 13. And there's just, there's very few ways for him to do that. There, he'd have to go above and beyond to do that. So I wasn't really worried about him breaking. And worst case scenario, I have an assassinate to uh, to assassinate the rumonger, things like that. So uh, I could do weigh the crab, and I do. 
So this way, if he does play a Kachiko or something like that, I can assassinate that thing, and then, uh, you know, I can weigh the crab to kill Kachiko. Now, if he had a cancel, that's that would suck, but he did have a cancel. But now, it's like, that was his one cancel. I think that was his second cancel. Um, so he only has one cancel left, 15 cards left in this deck. He probably doesn't have it, so if he, if he were to play a Kachiko or something along those lines... Uh, I could always do the way the crab combo, and uh, I'm doing Earth here for some reason. Political air, interesting choice. I guess because of entrenched position. I'm just doing it because of entrenched position, entrenched position, position, entrenched, entrenched position. Huh. Okay. And I'm taking my time trying to decide what to do with this. You know, when you're attacking in an entrenched position with the conflict that that the stronghold is strong to, you're basically saying, like, I have no intention of, you know, uh, uh, of breaking. I'm doing it for the dishonor. So, I'm doing the air ring. Currently, I'm winning. Um, and I, I, I happen to know that I have this assassination in my pocket. So, you know, worst case scenario, he plays something and then I just assassinate the rumor monger for him to lose the game. So I feel pretty good about this. I just pass. Uh, and I win. I gain the one honor from him. So he's at one honor. So he has one attack in which to, you know, win the game. And he currently has no cards in hand. And then he plays Kachiko. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I don't... I don't think it's surprising that he had Kachiko, especially with all the faith that he had. Uh, that's just what Crab does. So I don't defend, and or I defend with the little guy, and then I assassinate the uh, the thing to win. So I get him down to zero honor. So it was a little grindy this game. Uh, it was it was um, I let him have the air ring too much. Like that was one thing. I was I, I was a little addicted to the Earth Ring early on. And if I had just done the air ring, even if I didn't win it, which I wouldn't have in those cases, because you could see he denied the earth ring a lot of times with like the Kachiko plus Cunning Magistrate combo and things like that. Uh, so, you know, he, he was able to cancel that out pretty well. But if I had done air those ways, it would have made him win air on defense. Then he wouldn't have been able to do it, and they would have had really, on, really bad honor problems. So, uh, that was the first game. Let's go to the next game. This is round two. One second. Ah, all right. So, round two, he gets second player again. I think he gets second player in all three of these games. It just seems to, it seems to be what happens to me like all the time. I never not get first player. Um, so I, I do a standard opening, you know, uh, a 1-3 with 2 pass. It's pretty good. You get 2 fate. You're feeling pretty good about it. And once again, I bid 1. And haha, -ha, see, he learned. He bid 3. Uh, you know, it's funny because he's doing this for practice for pack south. And, you know, his inclination is to bid 5 against Crab, as you could see in the first game. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if, if he's just adjusting solely for me, because, if, I don't know if you know this, not a lot of crabs are playing Dishonor all that much. Like, a lot of people do, like, a, a side Dishonor. But this is my personal experiment. I'm trying to find out how to beat Scorpion, and I think this is the way, so I'm being super aggressive with my Dishonor build. So, we'll see how it goes. Um, he bids three, he amps it up to four... And then he just takes an honor back. So it's uh, 12 to 8. You know, like I said, most hand-holding is fucking stronghold in the entire game. Scorpions is. Makes him basically immune to dishonor. <laughs> Ironically, I, I say that after I just dishonored him. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's just a very... It makes playing the game so safe. So, uh, you know, what am I doing here? What's going on? 
I'm waiting to attack because I'm first player and first player has to attack. I do a void ring just, you know, primarily to prevent him from doing a void ring. But it's also kind of like, you know, I can charge... Uh, no, I can't. Uh, I can, um... I can just make him bounce a, f a couple defenders. Yeah, the, the three cost, the three strength guy seems like a pretty good choice. Uh, worst case scenario, I can play a Wayfinder in, and then use the Guardian's ability to give the, the Wayfinder plus two, plus two, which seems pretty good. Um, let's see if I do that. That is, in fact, what I do. And then I look at the second thing, and it is shameful display. So I know I'm not going there for a while. And then he minus, he minus two, minus two me's. And I was like, ah, shit. And I completely forgot the reason I played him in the first place. And I immediately noticed it. Like, I'm like, shit. Like, I didn't even, it didn't even give him a chance to pass yet before I realized, like, oh my god, what the hell am I doing? I had a trigger right there. And I said, he says, did you have a thing to do? Uh, I said, yeah, the, the dude gives plus two, plus two, and he's like, okay, and I was like, it's, it's fine, like, this is, these are things that happen, and this is competitive play, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be, uh, handheld, if you know what I mean, so, anyway, uh, he does, a uh, 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 that, and he didn't have anything, which is nice, you know, he didn't have a fan, he didn't have anything like that, I didn't know what his deck list was, so I don't really know exactly what, what's going on with his deck, but it was nice to know that he didn't have it, so, um, I have a Crisis Breaker here. He, I, I triggered his Sacred Cache. That's the second time I've run right into Sacred Cache in turn one. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not upset about that. Like, I, of all the things that I hate about them, Scorpion, being Scorpion, uh, is Sacred Cache is not one of them. I think the Sacred Cache is a good card, but it's not a fantastic card. Um, uh, So, anyway, I, um... Waiting for him to do something. Uh, I'm attacking in, I'm currently not breaking, I'm at three strength. Oh, oh, he was having connection issues, that's what it was. I was curious, like, what is he doing? So, uh, he's disconnecting, reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting at some point. There we go. Uh, so I get the Earth Ring. I didn't break. And then he does an air conflict. I was anticipating being able to bring my guy in, but he um, clouded it. So that was unfortunate. Um, let's slow this down. So it's my Crisis Breaker to his his dude and his other dude. I don't really care about what their names are, to be honest. Uh, he has a holding, so I'm trying to decide, like, do I buy this guy? Uh, I do. And then I bid one again. Now I have a Spyglass, so I could put that on my Shri Yasuki, but I do know that he's running Assassinate. So another thing I could do is I could put it on, like, I could, uh, I could, like, put it on the Crisis Breaker and then use the Vanguard Warrior to, uh, to do that thing right there, if that's what I want to do. Uh, so now he's just trying to, like, he's just scouting like you wouldn't believe. Uh, I'm not sure why exactly, but he runs into uh, that, and I defend with the Shuri so I can look at the top card, and I get a Mountain Does Not Fall, which is a good card. Uh, I currently don't have any um, things in play, so it's not a thing. But I do win the Military Earth on defense, which gives me a fate for winning, because he... he um, favorable grounds out. So that was a pretty good deal. Because I get a free fate, you know. Uh, not not the worst thing to happen in the world, you know. So. <sighs> anyway. Now it's my turn to attack. I think I'd like to do... Is it fire? Yeah, just fire. Just so I can dishonor that dude... Uh, whatever his name is. The Illustrious Plagiarist, or whatever it's called. What is it called? Yeah, The Illustrious Plagiarist. Such a weird name. So I'm doing a military fire. Yeah. 
I get a free fate, I get another fate. So I'm at five fate. You know, I'm going to have a relatively okay board at the end of this round, and I'm going to get fate here. I have five fate going into the next round. Uh, and I have a reprieve in hand and a charge, so I can always charge in, like, Casada and get a reprieve on him. Then I can add three guys on the board, unless you mono know war is moon. That's a whole thing. Uh, but I'd have three guys on the board and five, and like four, like three or four fate. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty good right about now about the board state as it is. I attacked in the shameful display because I knew he wouldn't defend with his illustrious plagiarist because he's a one strength military. He wants to attack politically with that guy. So I I attack. He defends with his guy, and then I bonsai. I split the bonsai because if he has a Miramoto's fury, I want to be able to still, you know, uh, do that thing where. Yeah, and then he bows my guy. Now, it's currently 4-2. to two. I'm not breaking, uh, but I could charge in Casada. That's something I could do. And uh, I know he has the illustrious plagiarist. Um, you know, he he's going to get a charge now, if he wants it. And he can charge in the guy that's right there, the, the guy that comes to 3-3. Three, three. That's something you do. He says, dang it. I don't know why he's saying dang it tried to counter that. Oh, he's tried to counter. Oh, well. And then he bows that guy, too. So I'm like, well, shit, dude. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Um, I just win. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. Like, the world does not... The world is not interested in me fucking winning this shit. So... Uh, he does have the guy, but he's dishonored now, so he's a zero strength military. Uh, he did, he, I'm sorry, he did political the first attack, and it got rallied to military, so he has a military left. Now he could, he could, he can copy my charge. So, you know, if he just attacks with the illustrious plagiarist, he can charge in, you know, that guy, the three three, when he's below honor, and he is right now. So, you know. He also plays a back thing for good measure. Eh, that's that's good to know. So he plays the that thing, um, and then he attacks my fourth province. I honestly I don't know what he was looking for. I charge in my guy. I guess he was looking for uh, I guess he was looking for shameful to break it quickly. Uh, because I don't have a conflict character in my hand. So he breaks it without me getting to resolve it, which always feels bad. You know, it's it's never a good feeling. But I got a I got another Forge Edict out of his deck. Uh, I put a fate on Casada, and then he passes. So I'll pass. You know, I could keep the Crisis Breaker around, but he's a fucking two zero at this point because you know, a blank two zero. So there's really no reason to. Uh, if I kept him around, it'd be purely because he costs three fate, and that's just not a good investment on my reprieves. Uh, if I'm reprieving somebody, I want to reprieve someone who has a bunch of attachments or a bunch of reasons for me to fucking want him. And, uh, you know, I get another low-cost guy, and I get a Vanguard Warrior, and I get a, a Witch Hunter if I wanted to. So, this is, uh, this is feeling pretty good. This is feeling pretty good. I, I'm on the one-bid plan still. I haven't gotten a chance to play a, a Spyglass, but I think now is the time. And, of course, he probably has something to either remove it or steal it. But that's life, you know. It's not. It's not something that you can. Um, you can't plan for these things. It's just going to happen. He's going to take it because that's what that's what Scorpion does. They, they take your fucking attachments. It's like, am I am I happy about it? No, I'm not happy about it. But uh, 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 it's 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 what you deal with in this in this matchup. Scorpion's just a, sh a pile of shit to play against. They're they're like the worst. They're they're the worst clan to play against. In the, in the game. And then he has the gall to call my deck not a super positive play experience. <laughs> I fucking love that. It's like, you're adorable. Um, he's doing... I'm doing a military void at sick cash. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, go go look at your stupid conflict deck. Like I have nothing better to attack into. There's literally nothing that I sh I'd rather attack into than than uh, that, which seems pretty unfair. But that's that's the game, and that's what you have to deal with. So I'm pretty clearly 
clearly, I'm pretty clearly breaking at this point. Um, let's see if he's got anything for it. Does he? Does he got anything for it? I do a void ring. I break. I do a void ring to remove the fate from the illustrious plagiarist, because copying events is pretty good. And right now he has free reign to do a, a charge, which would be irritating. Uh, so uh, he stealths that guy, so I'll defend with that guy. Seems fair. Now I could. I was I was actually thinking of like clouding the illustrious plagiarist just to stop him from taking that charge and using it here to break. But I was like, Ugh. you know, uh, clouding a guy with no fate feels so bad. It feels so bad. So I didn't do it. And predictably, he uses illustrious plagiarist to copy the charge. Uh, and I'm like, uh, okay. Not much I can do about that. I mean, there's something I could do about it, but it would have felt so bad to do it. So I pass, and he breaks, and it's a thing that's going do 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 He breaks. Air ring. Yes. Got him. Got there. So now I'm actually under fate on him, which is fine to me, because then he can't use his stupid stronghold. But, uh, what do I do here? Do a political water. Yeah. Maybe run into uh, meditations. Is that something I could do here? I think I do shameful. Uh, I guess just to like coerce him to defend. But he doesn't defend because he's got uh, a fate worse than death. <laughs> but you know what? My opponent being at zero fate is okay. I I am okay with that. You know what I mean? Like among the things that can happen, I am okay with him being at uh, zero fate. So I reprieve Casada, and he didn't have anything to answer for it. So I, I lose the ability to use Vanguard Worry because of that of a fate worse than death. But it only really cost me like one fate, really, and a card, because the guy I was going to do it to have to have to approve. Didn't see the approve play. See, oh, he f he missed the reprieve, I guess. Eh, that's unfortunate. He has two let goes. So anyway, he's salty about that, but I I, I I'm not I'm not concerned about him missing plays. Because people are going to do that. He said he said his wife is distracting him. Um, anyway, so I just uh, I have I have seven fate. He has got seven fate, so we're we're pretty even. I just play a couple convoy ka Kaiyu envoys and then another Shujisuki because he has a holding again. I love I love playing against decks with a bunch of holdings. I don't necessarily enjoy playing against his deck because his deck is ass. But it's got a bunch of holdings, so it, it, it works for me most of the time. Um, he's at three honor because he bid three. He's getting a little aggressive on his on his uh, bids, I guess, because he felt like it was close to the end. So uh, I defend. Let's see here. I think I defend with Casada just just in case uh, he has a card that would uh, send someone home or something like that. I didn't want to get a, like a free, like a little janky ass break off on me. So, and then, you know, if he wins, uh, the two people, the person he wanted to bow with the water ring, he can't. So, what's he doing here? Slow this down. So, he played a court games, Kasada canceled it. Uh, and then he moved it over to the Sinister Soshi, because that makes sense. I played a Mountain Does Not Fall, and he countered it. Because Scorpion. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm winning. He just, he, he, he bails. He fucks right off. Which is, uh, which is a thing that he can do. So I win on defense, not that it matters at all. 
Uh, this this witch hunter being clouded is such a bummer. Uh, but I do have a cloud just sitting in my pocket. Uh, granted, he said he has two let goes, but what are you gonna do about that, right? I mean, uh, what do you what do you do about that? I I I. I I can't answer everything. And I run the pilgrimage, which I knew was like a 50% chance. It was either meditations or pilgrimage. Uh, so I do the firing, and he defends for some reason. Not sure why. I guess just to stop the honor loss, but, um, you know, uh, that's that's probably why he did it. But, you know, uh, he gets a free fate from pilgrimage being revealed, and then he comes at me with a two-strength military. Three strength military, and I defend with the witch hunter. Um, <clears throat> just pass, because what could he possibly have in his hand that would actually matter to me? Uh, he plays an ornate fan, so I'm like, "Ooh, is he gonna? I don't want him to fucking policy obey me." So I'm at two, so I just go up to four. So at least now it's like he would have to actually bid honor to do it. And then he charges in that little guy. Uh, nice stronghold. To go up to five. I don't. I don't really know why he charged that guy in. I. I don't see the point. But. Mm, I don't know. Who's to say? Who's to say? And then he plays an unassuming Jimbo in. So he. He. Uh, oh, he, first he's doing a policy debate. So it's my four. His four to my five. Um, I'm like, all right. If he wants to win, he has to bid three. And he bid two, because I guess he miscounted. So we tie, he gives me a fate, or he gives me an honor, but nothing happens. And he says, I hate playing on line. I just thank him for the free honor. He said, I would have just manipulators. Yeah, I guess he could have done that. So now he plays that thing. And you can see he's, uh, he's kind of tilting at this point. Uh, I guess because of the mistakes he's making. Which is understandable. You know, no one likes making mistakes. So he wins. I didn't have any answer to it, so he wins, but he doesn't break and moves the fate from the guy. I play a Wayfinder. I just look at the last thing. It's like, oh, it's meditations. Shocking stuff. So I attack... Uh, what is it? Political air? Yeah, do political air. And then he uses that little girl again to give him minus two, minus two. And it's like, well, shit, dude. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do about this shit. And I was like, I need to get that damn favor. Because favor would have helped me there. Um, so, like, basically everything leaves on my side. But I get a watch commander. So that's pretty nice. Um, I don't know if he would have won, necessarily. Because, like, you know, he was bemoaning the fact that he couldn't just raise his honor total. Um, with with the with the manipulator, but what I had in hand was like two way the crabs and uh, a cloud of the mind. Um, I don't think it would have mattered at all if he had won that. So he would have just paid an honor. He would have been at one honor now. And uh, it, it just wouldn't have mattered. It, it wouldn't have mattered at all. So anyway, uh. He was kind of tilting about that decision, uh, and then I guess he, he, you know, he missed the reprieves because he had to let go, and he had a couple of misplays, but I had a misplay too. Like that first round, I I missed the heated guardian, so uh, I say like, oh, hey, keeper monk, how nice of you to join me. Like I, keeper monks are so fucking good. I finally fucking see one on on like the last round. So I play out my guys, and then I pass for the fate because he bought shoju. And then he buys Yogo Hiroi. So he's really going with, like, I'm winning this round. So we bid one to one. Um, do I pass? I might just pass. But I, uh, yeah. I guess I just do a political. No, not political. Do I do political? That's weird. No. Nah. Yeah, I just pass. That's fine. So now I think he... Does he do like an all-in? I would be surprised if he just did an all-in. 
Hmm. He's going to start out with Hiroi and Shoju. And that guy. And that guy. So he's doing all in. Probably political. Uh, he does a political air. So I defend with just the two guys that he leaves me. And then I look at my deck and I'm like, ooh, hey, free rebuild. That's nice. What do you do? All right. So I put a fan on my guy. He lets it go. Shocking stuff. Uh, now, I, I should have done the, the unicorn card first, but he let that go. But I didn't have another fate anyway, so I guess it didn't matter. But I just go up to... Uh, I go up to, to, to that. He does it again. Uh, but he's not breaking. I draw a card, and it's a policy debate. So I can I can policy debate him. Sure. And that's something I can do. And then he weighs the scorpions. That guy. Uh, I think I can still do it, though. Oh, right. So I have favorable grounds in the Borderlands Defender. That'll work. Um, and then I policy debate the the one strength guy. And I bid one. He has to bid one. So he has Miramoto's Fury, another motherfucking attachment control card. Like, it's so ridiculous. And then a Fate Worse Than Death. He can't afford Fate Worse Than Death, so I'm not worried about that. Um, <clears throat> but he has Miramoto's Fury and Calling in Favors. Uh, it's a tough call between the two, but I go with the Miramoto's Fury because then I can attack and know that I can get a break. Um, so I stand... Who do I stand? I stand the Borderlands Defender. I don't think it mattered. I don't know why, what the, what the decision was, but... So I can do a political earth to break and get a Keeper Monk. Maybe get another Keeper Monk, I forget. I really should have done Void, because then I can just Void out his Shoju, and then next round be perfectly in the clear. But I want to get rid of that calling in favors. And he said, okay, I'll concede, but I'm not dissatisfied with the game. 100, 100 Jigoku created play mistakes. Uh, I do think that I would have most likely won, because he's going to have Shoju. Uh, I'm going to have you know, five cards in hand to his one, uh, and I know what they are, um, and he can only really bid one next round anyway. It was getting really painful at the end, but I was going to have two Keeper Monks, uh, you know, just, you know I, I was going to have a nice, good board, and then I would have had uh, possibly a Cloud the Mind, I could weigh the Crab, whoever he bought in, or maybe I could weigh the crab Shoju. In fact, that might have even been what I wanted to do. I could have just, you know, Shoju traded the Borderlands Defender with Way the Crab. That seems like a fair thing to do. So, uh, there's the second game. Uh, it was a little tighter. You know, I wasn't putting on as good honor, uh, as good of honor pressure. But, uh, anyway. We'll go to the next game. This is the third and final game that we played. Uh, and it starts the same. I actually get to go second. That's pretty nice. And I think I just keep this entire setup. Like, a weenie build is really not that bad, especially when you have holding. I guess I did mulligan off one guy. Uh, but I get to keep a Shrewd Yasuki and a Kaio Envoy. Both of them just generate advantage, like nobody's business. Uh, I get a Shrewd Yasuki with zero. I guess because I have two Iron Mines. Like, I may as well. What am I doing? Oh. Some guy was asking, like, hey, how can I join the Discord thing? So I just sent him the chat. Uh, he bids three to my one, and then takes a fate back, because, or a fate, takes an honor back, because that's fair. That's a thing that you can do. Um, so it's my two guys to his two guys. I have five fate to his four fate. Looking pretty good overall. He attacks, what is this, military? Yeah, he does a military of one. Earth ring at shameful display. So you know I'm defending that shit. Uh, I think I just defend with a Kaio Envoy. Although, like... What? What? Don't do that. Stop it. 
I know you want the fate, Joe, but stop it. Joe? Joe? There you go. Press done. Press done. You motherfucker. There you go. Alright. Shameful display. I honor my guy. Dishonor his guy. And then, um... He pays one fate to remove the dishonor token on his guy. But I'm still currently winning. And then he policy debates. So, he's gonna win that shit. I could bid three to his one and stop it. Because you know he's bidding one. I'll give him two honor back. Yeah. So I just stop it. I give him two honor to stop it. It's not ideal. It's not what I want to do. But I don't need him taking away my ki my um my my bonsais or I don't need him taking away the the skirmisher or anything like that. So he lets me win. So I'm pretty happy about that overall. Um. And then what do we do? I'm thinking about weighing the crab because he either has to to weigh the crab, the guy that he's currently yeah. So I weigh the crab. He has to choose between getting rid of the guy that is currently sitting on the board or uh, getting rid of the guy with one fate. And he chooses to get rid of the guy that's sitting on the board. And hey, look, I get another way of the crab. That's pretty nice. Uh, I play a skirmisher with one fate because now I'm like, you know, if... Do I do void? That would be a good play. If I do void, that means I can take the fate off that guy and then if he plays like, I don't know, something like a like a like a like a, a stealth motherfucker with one fate on him I can I can just pass so uh, he has four fate but what are the odds he has a mirror most fury right so I'm trying to decide if I want to do bonsai a bonsai would just let me win and break a shameful display and I just think it's worth it because uh, honestly if if he had the mirror mode of fury he probably would have done it there. He wouldn't have passed, which I think is what he did. Yeah, he he passed. So, and now he fucking mirror mode furious me. I mean, it's just like that card is the most frustrating card in the entire game because there is no reason why you should be able to just blank out an attack like it didn't even happen for one fate. Uh, he has no defenders. I'm breaking, and then he's just like burp zero zero. Sorry, fuckhead. You know, so... Am I happy about it? No. But am I going back to that shit? You better fucking believe it. Because I got a fan. And I can get a policy to bid if I too if I want to. So, I have a fan. I'm attaching that fan. I'm breaking this shit. Like, I should have broken it last time, but I can break it now. Like, fuck your shit. Fuck your stupid cards. Stupid fucking dragon cards. So, I win. I get favor, and I get to keep this guy with one of my iron mines. I want to put. I want to leave the iron mines on shameful display because I want him to go back to shameful display. You know, if he wants to break iron mine, he needs to attack shameful display, which he does not want to do because that's more honor pressure and that's more status tokens, which are a bummer to him. So I have this way of the crab, uh, and he has two big guys. Now he probably is going to play a little guy first, but you never know when you can set up, when you can randomly set up a key way of the crab. You just never know. So he plays it right. He plays a guy with one fate because he's a good player. And then I... Do I play that guy? Yeah? Do I do it? Am I bad? Yeah. And I'm trying to decide. I have an iron mine, so I could play it with zero fate and just save it at the end of the round. Or I could just put two fate on it, keep it around for good. Yeah, and I decided to do that. And then he passes, because that's what crab. That's what scorpion does. They fucking have nine fate and shit. And then I bid one, and I get an assassination, which is pretty fucking nice, because uh, assassination's a good card, and I like it. I like assassination. So um, he has nine fate, so that tells me he most likely has Kachiko in his hand, which is good for me because I have the way of the crab assassination combo. So if I can get him to commit to an attack here. And then I policy debate him. I could maybe take a four G deck out of his hand, and that might be enough to to you know fuck up the Kachiko play. 
You know what I'm saying? So uh, alternatively, like I'm doing here, I can do fire and then just dishonor that guy so he can't stop the assassination. And look at that, I hit I hit secret cache again. Secret cache. Um, again, of all the shitty provinces that Scorpion has, I, I prefer that one the most. As sad as that is. So I'm looking at this. My guy's a 4 to his 1. So I could policy debate him and have a plus 3, which is basically like, why are you even bothering? Because then he'd have to bid 5. Let's see here. He'd have to bid 5 to get to 6. And then I have 4, and I bid 1 to get to 5. So he'd have to bid 4 just to match me, and then 5 to beat me. In which case, I'm probably okay with that. Most likely. But not many people want to do that. So he doesn't defend. And then he fate worse than death, my dude. That's fine. Uh, I am still breaking, though. And I say, let's see if he's got the second one. And I pass, because I'm currently breaking. Oh, well, I, I do that, yeah. I, I do that. I should have done that. And then he assassinates my guy. Luckily, I got this handy-dandy iron mine. Right, Joe? Hey, Joe, there you go. There you go. So I got the iron mine. So he stays in. I don't know if that was, like, uh, intentionally that's what he wanted to do or what, but it worked out for me. Uh, 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 I don't know why he did it personally. But, anyway, broke sacred cash. You know, I, I, like I said in the last game, I think he was tilting at that point, so maybe he forgot about Iron Mine, and maybe that, maybe that just further tilted him. I'm not sure. So, anyway, uh, he's got five fate. I've broken two provinces to his zero so far, and I have more honor than him. He's at five honor, so it's looking pretty good. And he does a military conflict with his dishonored guy for zero. And then I just defend for one. Because why not? That's fair, right? That's an interesting choice. What is the purpose of that? What the hell is the purpose of that? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So, I'm just going to policy debate him. Uh, because that's that's something I can do. And he's already low honor, so he has to bid one. I bid one, I win. I get to look at his hand. Whenever it comes out. So he's got two Kachikos, two for shame, two for court games, a cloud the mind, and an alright fan. Um, this is frustrating to me because, you know, I could have discarded Kachiko, but now I can't because he's got two. So, uh, I don't remember what I do. I think I just take the for shame because it breaks up the double for shame combo. And yeah, like, I was predicting he had Kachiko, and he did, but he had two of them, which means that I can't policy debate that out of his hand. Unfortunate for me. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to decide, like, do I take one of the Kachikos, or just take, like, a Four Shame? I think I just end up taking one of the Four Shames. Just so he can't double Four Shame me here. Oh, okay. Okay, I chose Cloud the Mind. He didn't have a way to play it, but I chose Cloud the Mind. Uh, so, he does that. Military air. Okay. I, uh... I ween. Um... And then I just... I think I stand that guy by sacrificing that guy. Yep. And then he has no cards in hands in place, so he has to. Uh, I can just attack. What do I attack here? But water could work. Water, water is a decent play. Yeah, water. Now I could hit. Like if I hit shameful, to, if I hit pilgrimage, that's gonna be a bummer. But if I hit meditations, then that's a little better. Uh, and I hit meditations. So that's nice. So I'm breaking. And he does not defend. And I think he just lets me win it. So I break. Bro. 
broken. I think, yeah. Oh, he's still waiting. He's thinking. I think he was trying to decide, like, do I put Kachiko in here? But uh, I discard Yogo Haroi and I water ring that guy standing, so I have a defender. Uh, I don't. I didn't really think it mattered. It was just something that I could do. And then he plays Kachiko, and he's like, "Haha, I will get a break, like a break that I so deserve." <laughs> and he attacks in a rally to the cost. <laughs> Like, the one thing Kachiku didn't want to see. So, I don't even defend, because I know it's in his hand. And I just fucking assassinate that dude. And then I fucking weigh the crab that dude. And then he... He... He, um... He concedes. So, like I was saying, uh... This was kind of... This was a little bit of, like, a... This is a little bit of a tilting game, or kind of like a, um, it was a one-sided game. Uh, and it was basically because I got the Way of the Crab assassination combo working, and because I was able to break provinces early on because he didn't have many buffs uh, to stop me, or, you know, ways of stopping me. Because he wanted to attack. His goal was attacking. Um, you know, he, um, I remember when he won the Kotai, some Scorpion players were talking, they said, like, it's really interesting, he has, like, no buffs in his deck, like, he doesn't really, I don't think he runs Ornate Fans or Fine Katana, so it's kind of like, what he has on the board is what he plays. Yeah, policy debate, assassination, way the combo game ends games. And then he says he's just on tilt from having Jagoku hand me the last game. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but... You know, looking at his deck, and and I can post the his deck in the in the in the chat as well, or in the description as well. Uh, he basically doesn't run any control or any any buffs. So what he has on the board is what he has, and the reason he does that, I think, is because he's considering Mono Aware to be like his buffs because he's clearing his opponent's board, so they don't have characters. And therefore, he doesn't have to worry about buffing his own characters. Now, this game, this third game, was very one-sided. Uh, the, the first game was an excellent example, except for all the, er the air rings I just handed to him on a silver platter. And the second game was, you know, mistakes were made on both sides. You could argue that his mistakes lost in the game. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced, but I could see his argument, so... Let's call it two zero oh, and one, because let's say we tied in the in the second game. But you know, I, I went undefeated against him. Uh, technically, went three and zero. Oh. Theoretically, went two and one, two zero oh, and one with you know two wins, zero losses, and one tie. And overall, uh, a very good showing. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys can learn from this, and and maybe Scorpion becomes a little bit better of a matchup in the future. And like I said, my, my, my deck list I'll post in the description, and his deck list I'll post in the description, just for those curious uh, what I run and what he runs. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.